The first project that we're going to tackle is this uh, oil drum. As you can see, it's a pretty simple model. Um, and we're going to create the textures for this without using any photographs at all. So um, all the results we're going to achieve are basically through the power of the brush engine alone. And um, the reason that I want to do it this way is A, to show it can be done, that you can create photorealistic textures without actually using photographs as the base. Um, but also the big benefit of working this way is that you're not then completely dependent on your photographic reference. You don't have to spend hours hunting on the internet for that perfect image. You can just create the textures yourself. It, all it requires is a little bit of understanding about how materials and surfaces work, but it's nothing that complicated and it is actually quite easy to do. One of the things that's great about painting in 3D is that it's actually much more forgiving than 2D painting. You can be much more sloppy and less precise and still get very good results. Anyway, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I've already set up. The first thing is that um, the barrel has a couple of UV maps applied already. The sides are just unwrapped cylindrically and uh, the top has got its own separate UV map. And if we go to the render tab, um, you can see there's a, an environment already um, created there. So basically it's just a uh, it's just a smart IBL file and I'll show you where you can get that um, if you go to hdrlabs.com forward slash sibl forward slash archive dot html um, these are free to download and to use so um, the one I've used in this uh, project is old industrial hall which I'm going to try and locate now there it is so this is the one that I've used. Um, it comes with an HDR file for your reflections and um, a background image and also some uh, a small blurred lighting image. Um, and finally, the other thing I've done is I've already set up some materials on the uh, polygons just to save me going through that step uh, during the video tutorial. Okay, without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing to do before embarking on a project like this is to look at some reference. So. Um, got a few images I've taken off the internet. I'm not going to follow them slavishly. It's just really to get a feel for what old oil drums look like. But one of the things that I want to do is to have really, really flaky paint um, that's going to sort of peeling off and revealing um, the old rusty metal underneath. And to achieve that is going to require a little bit of thinking outside the box. So with um, the correct uh, texture selected in the shader tree, we're going to create a new image map. So let's go new image um, and this is just going to be a diffuse color. It doesn't need an alpha channel or anything. So it can be a straight JPEG and let's put it in the correct directory to painting meshes and I'm going to call this tut um, barrel rust.jpg and so we can have it at 2K for this asset, that should be fine, RGB, and I am going to set the color to black, just uh, gives me a good base for painting. Okay, so I just need to check that uh, my texture is using the correct UV map, and also I am going to get the gamma correct, so you go 1 divided by 2.2, so it looks okay in the renderer. So now I'm in the paint tab, I'm going to select an airbrush, I'm going to put it on a procedural brush and I'm going to add the nozzle and the random ink. I'm going to make sure, first of all, that the uh, enable jitter is on. Um, and I've got to be happy with the size of my procedural brush's noise and make sure that the settings in the randomized ink look good. And now I'm going to pick a nice sort of red rusty color draw out a brush size and then just start painting. Um, so the thing that's important here is to I might have to paint in a few passes. What I want is some sort of large high sort of frequency or sort of low frequency details and then some smaller details on top. So I'm just going to do one pass very quickly. Um, it's just going to have largish sort of details and obviously with the tablet pressure you can vary it within the one stroke so you can paint some very small stuff like I'm doing at the moment and then if you press a bit harder it will make much 
bigger kind of details as you paint. So it's good to vary the size and pressure of your strokes as you paint. Um, this will really help to create the kind of chaotic um, and organic sort of texture that you need. And you can see that the color variation is in there and um, it doesn't look sort of mechanical at the moment. I'll quickly just finish these details. And then what you need to do, it's good to have some black because there's, it gives the impression of sort of, you know, dirt and oil and things like that. So once I've painted my large details, the next thing to do is to come in, is to zoom in a bit more. I'm even going to press the zero key on the number pad to um, get rid of the rest of the interface and paint in some patches of smaller details so that there's some contrast you know, not everything is the same size, but some things, you know, some details are bigger, some details are smaller. Um, just makes everything a lot more interesting. And the other thing you can do, of course, is to change the color. So I'm going to start painting with a darker color. Painting some of these details in, you know, introducing a bit more dirt and grit. And one of the things that you should really be thinking of is where do things get dirty? Um, so I'm thinking maybe there's been some sort of leakage at the join here at the top of the barrel. And, um, you know, that could mean there's some sort of oily grime at the top. So that would be a good place to have, um, you know, some darker sort of smeared details. And another thing that would be really good is to have some kind of smeary details coming down so sense that things have been dripping to do a few passes with the brush but you can see the brush really is very nice and organic um, I'm just going to reduce the brush size a bit and maybe press a bit harder create some more details and you can see straight away with very little effort we've achieved a kind of organic and very messy um, texture. So this is just a diffuse color at the moment but it's going to make a really good basis for something quite rusty. So um, something you need to be aware of is in Modo when you save your file it doesn't save the images. So if you want to save the image there's two ways of doing it. You can either come down onto the image in the image tab down here and right click and click on save uh, which I'm going to do right now or you can go to the file menu and then you've got save image and save all images. Um, another thing you can do is save all and that will save your scene and your image together. So now that we've um, painted our rusty diffuse texture it's time to go and have a look at it in the render tab. So if I maximize this render preview you can see it's come out a little bit dark um, in this lighting in particular. So there's a couple of things we could do. We could fix it in Modo by going add layer processing process and here we can tweak the uh, value which is essentially the brightness so if we pump it up you can see it's brightening the texture and uh, you can go you know well over a hundred percent and then you might want to take the saturation back down a bit you can also use the bias and gain controls to control the contrast you see it has quite a strong effect the only problem with this method is that um, if you're going to pass the assets onto someone else or if you're part of a larger pipeline and these textures need to be used outside of Modo, you're going to have to bake it all down to a single um, texture. So you'd have to bake your process and your painted layer down to one texture so that um, the next application in your pipeline can uh, can make sense of it. So I think actually it's more sensible to do your edits in Photoshop on the texture directly. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to delete this um, process texture and open the rusty metal diffuse texture we've just painted in Photoshop. So I'm going to switch to bridge and just open our image in Photoshop and I'm going to just click on the adjustment layer and pump up the um, brightness in the curves palette and then just quickly reduce the saturation a touch because it is quite bright now and just flatten the image. 
I'm going to keep it open so that I can always revert back if I'm not happy with what I've just done. Now switching back to Modo, update the image. Yes, that's much, much better. I'm, I'm much happier with that. Just before I carry on, some of you may notice that I'm working on a JPEG here. Um, obviously, every time you save a JPEG, even though I was saving it at maximum quality, there is the risk that you are degrading the image slightly with each save. So it's worth bearing in mind, I mean, obviously, with this kind of asset, you can actually get away with quite a lot because if there's a little bit of artifacting in this kind of rough chaotic texture no one's ever going to notice but if you are painting on high quality assets that are going to be really important in your shot obviously it's not a good idea to use a lossy format like JPEG but for this kind of asset it's usually okay so just something to bear in mind I tend to use JPEGs for these kind of unimportant or sort of low quality assets if you like or for things like masks that I'm not likely to save over again and again but if I need something that's going to be more robust then I'll probably switch to a different format such as uh, Targa or PNG or TIFF um, anyway so carrying on the rusty texture is looking pretty good I think it could do with a little bit of bump so what I'm going to do is add a noise texture now when you add the texture it comes in as a diffuse uh, texture by default and this is great because it lets you see what uh, the size of the the uh, noise is so I'm going to reduce it by well I'm going to reduce it to two millimeters and that looks pretty good and now I'm going to change the effect from diffuse color to surface shading bump and go back to my rusty metal material just to make sure the bump amplitude is okay it's at three millimeters which I think is probably fine for now so I'm going to restore my render viewport and move on so I've just gone ahead and created um, a new image for the top and the caps um, so if I go into the paint tab and select my airbrush with the procedural tip and make sure the nozzle and random ink are on draw out a brush size and a nice sort of rusty color and I'm just going to quickly paint some texture into the top of the barrel get a darker color and paint some sort of leaky stuff You get a black. So now I've painted the uh, rusty diffuse texture onto the uh, end and the caps of my barrel. I just want to select the original rusty metal um, barrel sides in the shader tree. Right click and select copy and that's going to copy all the properties of that material and I'm just going to paste it into the next two materials, the all drum ends and the all drum cap, just so that they've all got the same um, properties and values. And then I'm going to duplicate this noise material that I'm using as a bump and drag it into the all drum ends and then duplicate it again and drag it into the all drum caps. So essentially now we've got the same material uh, replicated three times on uh, all parts of the barrel. The next thing I want to do is to create the flaky paint and in order for the rusty metal to go behind the flaky paint I'm going to actually have to create a duplicate set of polygons so if I use the material selection mode and select the sides material and then holding down the alt key just convert that to a polygon selection I can then control C to copy those polygons hit N to create a new item control V to paste those polygons into the item list and I'm going to call this um, flaky paint and create an item mask so that will create a blank material now if I go back to my shader tree I can see those polygons are there so um, what I need to do is to paint a mask that's going to modulate between the flaky paint um, the holes in the flaky paint essentially and the rusty metal which is underneath it the first thing I need to do, obviously, is to create this mask image. So I'm going to go to Add Layer, um, Image Map, New Image, and I'm going to call this um, Flaky Paint Sides Mask. And I'm going to paint it at 4K. 
um, RGB it uh, doesn't need an alpha channel, it needs to be a black and white image and I'm going to set the color to white just so I can see what I'm doing in the paint tab and there it is before I switch to my paint tab I'm just going to make sure that my um, new image is using the correct UV map because otherwise I'm not going to be able to paint on it, so it is um, if you ever find yourself trying to paint on an image and nothing seems to be happening and the strokes aren't laying down it's either because you've got the wrong UV map selected in the image or you've got the wrong item selected so I think the next thing to do is to think about creating a brush so I'm going to get a paint brush with a procedural tip and draw out, make sure my colors to black and just draw a stroke so you can see with the default settings the effect is quite soft and I need something with much higher contrast because what I'm trying to do is to punch holes through this paint so I need a strong transition between black and white. So I'm going to set my gain to 200, that's the main contrast control. I'm going to set my bias to 60 just to make the black area slightly bigger. I'm also going to set my amplitude up to 200. So this should give me a really nice high contrast stroke, which it is, you can see. Um, the noise effect is a bit too big, so I'm just going to right click the GAN controls to affect all three values at the same time and set it to 40%. Um, not 400%, 40%. Okay, let me paint out a test stroke. This is quite good. Um, I'm just going to reload this image to go back to the previously saved state. Now the next thing I want to do is activate the nozzle because I don't want everything to be the same size. And then I'm going to enable jitter. But I don't want the pressure to modulate the brightness. I still want to keep this high contrast. So I'm going to set the strength to none and the size to pressure and just see what that gives me. So yeah, now if I press hard I should get a bigger stroke. There we go, it seems to be a little bit hard to control. I'm going to try the pressure sensitivity to low. That seems to be more responsive. And I'm reasonably happy with this brush so I'm going to reload and start painting the texture. So now that I'm ready to paint my texture, the main thing I've got to bear in mind is randomness and clusters. So what I mean by this is um, in order for something to look chaotic and natural and organic, you have to vary the size, the placement and the shapes that you paint. So the main way to vary the placement is to paint things in clusters because if you paint things at sort of regular intervals, they don't really look convincing. They look kind of artificial. So the idea is is to group little clusters of holes and uh, make sure the spacing is really random and that there's holes of all different shapes and sizes. So this means I need to paint big holes and then you know little small holes next to them and somewhere you know not in the middle but maybe a third of the way across another little hole vary my brush size. Of course because I've got the jitter setting on and the nozzle I can also vary as I paint. So if I press hard I make bigger strokes and if I press softly I um, make smaller strokes. It's important not to paint things that are too round because flaky paint wouldn't necessarily paint, um, sorry, flake in a circular shape. It will, it will take on all sorts of random and chaotic shapes. So another thing you can do is to scribble slightly as you paint the strokes because that will also really help to uh, make more random kind of shapes. So got to make sure I'm watching the size. It's a good idea sometimes to zoom in because that will affect the, uh, the size of the brush in relation to the mesh. So I'm going to pause the video and go around painting these holes and I'll come back in a second. So I've gone around my model and uh, I've um, painted a few sort of randomish holes in um, and I'm just going to talk about a couple of things um, that might help you if you're doing this kind of thing. One thing that you can do is once you've painted your holes in black you can paint back in in white just to work on the shapes a little bit more. Another thing is there's the lip of this um, of this barrel. Now if you paint on this, and you probably will want to because I want some flaky paint on this lip, just make sure that you spin the model around and paint on the other side because otherwise, um, because you're projection painting, essentially um, you're gonna only paint what, the, what you can see directly, so just make sure you turn the corner and uh, paint on the other side as well, otherwise it's gonna 
it's going to come to a sudden end basically there's going to be a sharp transition where that uh, lip turns the corner so um, once I'm more or less happy with these shapes I'm going to switch to a hard tip and just uh, still with my jitter settings on I'm just going to zoom in and paint out some of the sort of more grey areas I want to make sure I keep some of the um, chaos that and uh, sort of the rough edges that have been created by the procedural brush and I might even go back in and uh, reinforce those with another pass of the procedural brush but really it's just a case of getting the right shapes and uh, getting a result that looks good and organic so again I'm going to pause the video and finish painting so I've painted my mask and uh, I'm more or less happy with uh, how it looks I'm going to switch back to the render tab have a look at it um, so the effect is pretty good but I think I'm going to have to increase the contrast still more because I don't want any softness here at all. It's got to be a straight black and white mask. So um, I could cheat this in Modo by um, making this low value something like really low, like minus 1000, and the high value something really high, like 1000. And you can see straight away this is making a really high contrast map. But again, if this is part of a pipeline, um, it's better to do this kind of thing in Photoshop so I'm gonna take the map into Photoshop and show you a couple of techniques where you can uh, create a, uh, a high contrast black and white image so if I switch to Photoshop and uh, I zoom in a bit you can see that there's still a few sort of soft blurry areas so I need to get rid of these by using image adjustment threshold and what this does is turn every pixel into either pure black or pure white and you can tweak the slider until you're happy with the shape so if I just um, OK that now if I zoom right in you can see this has left some sort of hard aliased jaggy edges and there's two ways you can get rid of these the first is to use a filter called OLM Smoother so if you um, type OLM Smoother into Google I think it's the third or fourth result you come to olm.co.jp and they've got a section called OLM R&D and here you can download this filter OLM Smoother for free and I'll just demonstrate what it does if I go to filter OLM Smoother and just run it on the default settings you can see it's smoothed out that jaggy edge and created a nice anti-aliased edge so I just need to reflatten the image and just save the file go back into Modo and say yes to the reload and now you can see I've got much nicer transitions between the flaky paint and the rust underneath. Now just in case you can't get OLM Smoother to work for you, um, there is another way of doing this and that um, just involves using Photoshop tools. If you go to image size and increase your canvas size to 400%, make an absolutely huge file, especially if you're on a on an 8K map and then you go to image adjustments threshold and run your threshold what you can do see it's created the jaggies are much uh, less visible because the image is so much higher res and now you go back to image size and reduce it to 25 percent to go back to our original size and I'll just uh, zoom in to actual pixels you can see it's achieved more or less the same effect the um, the OLM Smoother actually gives slightly better results, but this is perfectly acceptable. So um, we're ready now to move on to the next stage. Now that my map is uh, ready, I need to change its effect from diffuse color to special effects stencil. And I also need to invert it. So now you can see we've got the holes in our, um, in our paint material. But because the two sets of polygons that the materials are applied to are essentially sitting right on top of each other, you can see the two materials are blending together. So I'm going to go to the Model tab, make sure I've got my flaky paint item selected. And I'm going to activate the Push tool, click in the viewport, and I'm going to type in a distance of 0.5 millimeters. So just half a millimeter, drop the tool, and now when I go back to my render tab, you can see that the material now sits clearly above the rust material. They're not blending together anymore. So now we're ready to um, create our proper material settings for the uh, paint material and also to work on the displacement. 
in order to make the material look like paint, um, there's two qualities it should have. It should be quite shiny and slightly glossy, and it should have a tiny bit of subsurface scattering. So the first things I'm going to do is to conserve energy and match specular, just to make the reflections more realistic. And then I'm going to set the specular amount to 10, the Fresnel to 80, and I'm going to set the roughness down to 10, because paint is sort of kind of glossy paint is, is um, not very rough and I am going to tick blurry reflection on and the next thing I'm going to do is to add 20% of subsurface and I'm going to take the front weighting all the way up to 100% and that's going to give it a more waxy kind of look and the next thing I want to do is to link my subsurface color to my diffuse color so I've just highlighted it here in the um, material transparency properties and uh, that helps me to find it in the channel list. So in the channel list I'm going to select subsurface color R, G and B and then I'm going to go to layout palettes schematic just to open a schematic view drag those three channels into the schematic view and then look for the diffuse color R, G and B drag these into the schematic view and uh, just separate them out from the um, subsurface color and now what I need to do is to connect diffuse color R to subsurface color R and do the same with G and B. So what that's done essentially is that it's connected the two so whenever I um, change my diffuse color the subsurface color is going to follow along with it. And now I can just choose a color so I'm going to go for a red um, let's just see what that looks like. Um, might tweak that a little bit. Let's. something like that for now. Um, we'll see how we feel about the color at the end of the process. So the next thing I want to do is to create a displacement map which is going to be based on this original stencil map um, because I want where the holes are to be sort of raised up from the surface of the barrel and then I want the areas where there are no holes to be sort of closer to the to the rusty metal underneath. So. Um, to do this, we're going to go back to our Photoshop document and I am going to get our original mask and save it as a Photoshop document. Um, and I'm going to call this Flaky Paint Side Displace. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to Image Mode and I'm going to ch change it to 16 bits per channel. And now what I want to do next is to separate out the black from the white. Essentially I want the black to be on its own layer and the background layer to be solid white. So in order to do this, if you go to your channels palette and you control click on the master RGB channel, this will make a selection based on the uh, luminosity of your image. And now I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to invert this selection and I'm going to fill my new layer with solid black. And I'm going to deselect go back to the background layer and fill that with solid white and now you can see that I've got a white uh, background layer and that the black is on its own layer with a transparency. So in order to um, create the beginnings of our displacement uh, map I'm going to double click this layer and go to the layer effects and go to outer glow and change the blend mode from screen to normal the opacity to 100 and set the color to black and now if I drag out the size you can see it's creating this black sort of blurry glow so I'm going to increase the spread first because I want it to spread out from the holes and then the size make it biggish and then here I'm just going to click on the contour square and make a custom contour this is essentially a curve that defines it's going to define the slope of our displacement so it's going to kind of slope sharply up towards where the holes are I'm going to OK all of that and save it a copy as a TIFF. So save as, select TIFF, it's going to overwrite the one I created earlier, discard layers and save as copy. So now I can switch back to Modo and if I go to add layer, image map, load image, can load in the image I've just created, it should bring it in as a diffuse color. So I'm going to change the effect from diffuse color to surface shading displacement and I'm going to need to invert it to get the effect that I'm looking for. So 
it looks quite harsh. I may have to go back and uh, change the um, diffuse glow settings. But before I do that, um, I'm going to first of all go to the material itself. Actually, no, I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to add a cellular layer. This should just come in again as a diffuse. And I'm going to drag that onto my displacement map to create a mask. And that already does some quite cool stuff. You can see it's really um, making the displacement much more chaotic. Now the next thing I want to do is come to the material itself and reduce the displacement distance. So I'm going to try 5 millimeters. Ah yes, that's much much better. And I'm going to make the material double sided so that you can see where it goes behind. I still think the effect is a little bit harsh. So to soften it I'm going to go back to Photoshop and double click on the outer glow effect and let's see I'm going to bring the spread back in a bit the size back out again that should make it softer and click here and maybe make our slope slightly less steep and now save as a tiff again overwrite the existing file discard the layers wait for it to save and as soon as that's finished we can bring it back into modo just update the image and have a look and yes that's much softer so this is a really good start um, I'm going to paint a bit more displacement and add some bump and also there's this artifacting here that I've got to deal with so to fix the artifacting I think what I'm going to have to do is go back to the model tab make sure I've got the flaky paint item go into polygon mode and I'm just going to run the push tool again at uh, the same settings as before which was um, 0 0.5 millimeters. Drop the tool. Let's go back to the render tab and have a look. Yeah, you can see that's fixed all of the artifacting. Now the other thing I want to do is just to increase the quality of the displacement. I'm going to go to the render settings and just tick displacement as bump. Um, that increases the uh, speed of the render and also where there's problems with the uh, quality of the uh, displacement map it uh, it gets rid of all the artifacting basically. The cellular mask that I've applied to the displacement is causing some transitions that are still a little bit too harsh um, even with a displacement as bumps so I'm going to select that cellular and just reduce its opacity to 50% just to soften the effect. So You can see it's still doing some interesting stuff with the uh, displacement but it's just a little bit more subtle. In fact, I might bring it down to 40 and see how that looks yeah that's much much better so there is there is some chaos and noise in there but it's it's just softer and more believable now the next thing I think I need to do is to add a noise layer to create some bump so as usual it comes in as a diffuse map and I'm going to change this size to two millimeters and then change the effect to surface shading bump okay that seems quite harsh so I'm going to go to the material and change the bump amplitude down to one millimeter I think it could actually be a little bit softer still so I'm going to go to I'm just going to divide that by two and I might go back to the noise and increase the size to five millimeters and that seems to be a little bit nicer so another thing I'd like to do is to add another displacement map on the on top of the one that we've already created so if you go to add layer image map new image and I'm going to save it as a 16-bit PNG because I need transparency and a good bitrate so I'm going to call it paint displace 2.png and um, save it as a 4k map format RGBA make sure you've got floating color set and OK that and we're going to keep it to diffuse color for now because um, just more straightforward when I'm painting so I'm going to switch to my paint tab and make sure we've got the flaky paint material set and our new 
image map selected. I'm just going to switch to the camera view to start with. Get a paintbrush. I think I'm going to use a procedural brush set to cellular. And you see my paintbrush settings. Should be okay. Use a nozzle with jitter. Set color to black. And um, actually I can set it to white. Let me just paint some test strokes. Okay, um, what I need to do is adjust my bias and gain. I'm going to go back to 50 and maybe turn the bias down at 25. Let me try another test stroke. Right, yes, that's better. Sort of more sparse and softer. So I'm just going to reload this image to start from fresh and start painting. Just basically some odd little bumps here and there. Just got to be careful. Um, when you lift up the stylus, sometimes it can leave a sort of harsh mark. It's important to lift up the stylus gently. Go back to my perspective view. And as before, it's crucial to um, change the size. So, for instance, if I click here, change the size of my cellular pattern as I paint, just to vary it as I paint around the barrel and um, just create some random kind of displacement, some noise and I'm going to go around the barrel as before and come back when I'm done. So I've gone around the model and uh, painted all around it with the procedural brush to create these sort of random dots. You can see the procedural brush is very very good for creating these kind of chaotic effects. So if we switch back to the render and look at our render preview um, I'm quite happy with the effect, so let's change it to displacement, see what it looks like. And that looks like really, really nice flaky paint. The effect might be a little bit strong, so that's easy enough to fix. I'm going to turn the opacity down maybe to 50 and see how that looks. A little bit more subtle, a little bit nicer. I would also like to bring the bump back up, so I'm just going to multiply that by two so it goes back to one millimeter and I think the thing to do now is to do a test render so I've done a test render and I'm just going to open the render window so you can see it um, I'm pretty happy with the look of the flaky paint but I think it's sort of a bit harsh sort of around here so there's a couple of things I'm going to do first of all close the render window I'm going to go to this um, cellular mask we've created and I'm going to change the type to noise because um, the cellular has got very harsh transitions, and so noise will probably soften that. And now that it's a noise map, I can probably bring it back up to 100. Um, and also the transition between uh, the levels of displacement are still a little bit strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften them by using the paint tools in Modo. But a couple of steps I need to do first. I'm going to go back to Photoshop, and I'm going to add a invert um, adjustment layer and save out my TIFF file again just so that um, things are the right way up when I uh, paint my displacement map in Modo. Just wait for that to save. Bring it back into Modo, update the file and um, go to the texture layer take invert off. So now we're back to where we were but I can paint on the map. And now I'm making sure that I've got my map selected. I'm going to go to the paint tab and I'm going to select an airbrush with a soft tip and the color should be white. And I'm just going to drag out my airbrush just where these really harsh transitions are and start painting. And you can see that it's softening it up. So um, I'm looking to create a bubbly kind of effect. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit random, that not everything's too smooth, because after all this is paint. And uh, as before, I'm just going to go around the model and uh, soften everything. So I've gone around the model with the airbrush tool, and um, using the white color, I've gone and softened most of these uh, harsh transitions. 
And I've also added a few extra lumps and bumps in the uh, paint just to uh, just to make a more interesting effect. So I'm going to drop the tool and I'm going to switch back to the render tab and uh, see how it's looking. So I think in terms of bump and displacement, it's looking really, really good. Um, so I think a good thing to do now would be to do a test render. So I'm going to fire one off and come back. So this is my test render. Uh, in terms of bump and displacement, I'm really happy. The next thing to do is to add some color variation to this red paint because it's too even at the moment. So what I'm going to do is go to my um, shader tree and add image map new image and we're going to choose a PNG because we want it to be transparent and um, let's call it um, paint um, variation okay make a 4k map RGBA and uh, wait for it to appear paint variation there it is so I'm gonna go to my paint tab and start painting on the barrel. So the first thing I'm going to do is select an airbrush with a soft tip, make sure the color is set to white, and I'm going to reduce the opacity to 50% and drag out quite a big airbrush. And I'm just going to paint some sort of bleaching, uh, particularly around the edges of where the holes are. Maybe the paint's faded where the, um, where the damage has been done on, uh, with the corrosion from the rust or whatever doesn't really matter what the reason is, it's just an excuse to create a little bit of color variation on this texture. So as before, I'm going to go around the model and uh, you can see what I'm doing, it's just sort of these areas of faint white and come back when it's done. So I've gone around the model and I've painted these sort of bleachy patches, so now I'm going to drop the tool, switch to the render tab and see what it's looking like. So I like the effect but it's a little bit strong so Let's reduce the opacity of this layer to something a bit more subtle. Yeah, that's better. You can see now it just introduces a little bit of variation. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go to Save All Images. And the next thing I want to do is to paint some sort of streaks of um, stained, sort of rusty kind of stuff um, dripping down. So I'm going to add a layer, a new image, just as before, uh, PNG as before and we'll call this um, paint streaks uh, a 4k map um, RGBA okay ready to go so let's switch to the paint tab and we'll need to set up a brush for this so as before I'm going to select an airbrush soft tip this time I'm going to change the color to black and use quite a small brush and I think I need to activate the nozzle with jitter on and let's just zoom in and create a test stroke just to see how that's looking yeah that's pretty good um, might try a bigger size to start with there you go and because of the jitter we're getting really nice variation here so if I zoom in and out that will also help to vary the size and I'm going to make sure that there's at the top there's a almost like a rim of stained gunk and let's paint a few streaks coming down break them up a bit maybe so make sure they're not completely continuous it doesn't really matter it's quite a good effect if there's some if there's some gaps and um, as usual I'm just going to go around and paint all of the barrel and uh, see you when it's done. So I've gone around the model and I've painted these streaks. I'm just going to have a quick look in Ray GL to see if I'm happy with it. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So drop the tool and go to the render tab. So I think the sides of the barrel are pretty much done. We've got everything we need in there. There's color variation, there's uh, dirt, there's uh, the flaky paint. So now it's time to work on the uh, on the top. So I'm going to turn on the materials that we created earlier on in the tutorial with the uh, rusty diffuse paint on the uh, top and the caps. And it's going to be similar to how we did the sides, except it's going to be a little bit simpler because 
I am going to want holes in the paint, but I don't necessarily need it to sort of peel away from the surface of the barrel like I did in the um, on the sides. So I don't need to duplicate the polygons in this case. I just need to basically mask out. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new group. So if I'm going to hit Control G and drag that image back out. And inside this new group, I'm going to add a new mask layer. So let's go to image map, new image. This can be a JPEG and I'll call it uh, barrel top mask. And add that in. It can be a 2K map. I just want RGB. I'm going to set the color to white as usual. OK that and it's in the group. So just as before we're going to use a procedural brush to uh, paint in a chaotic sort of texture to make our holes. So the first thing to make sure is that our image map has got the right UV map assigned and it is oil drum top UV that's the one that we want. If we switch to the paint tab make sure we've got the right item selected in the item list and the right image in the shader tree. So get a paintbrush procedural, change the type to noise and let's uh, bring the gain back up so the gain was 200 let's bring the bias up to 60 and make the color black, let's drag out a brush the nozzle's on and let me make sure jitter is on I'm just going to paint a test stroke yep that's pretty good nice effect actually and um, it's a case of just painting where you want the holes to be. I'm not going to make quite as many as I did um, on the sides. Let's just have a few little holes here and there. Maybe some worn areas here. I'm going to try and keep the effect fairly subtle this time so that it's not overpowering. For now I'm just going to drop the tool and go to the render tab and see what that looks like. So in the render tab I'm going to select the paint material and just copy those properties and then go back to the group we've just created and add a material layer, paste the properties from our paint layer and then change the barrel top mask to group mask, so that's in shader control, group mask, and here it is. So I think this is a pretty decent start. I may need to go back and paint a few more holes. Um, let's just increase the shininess. Oh, we need to add some, let's add some noise first. So textures, noise, let's change the scale to two millimeters and change it to bump see how that's looking actually that's pretty good just as it is I might uh, duplicate this and turn it into a displacement map so let's do that set it to displacement and see it's bringing the um, bringing the paint up as before so I think I'm just going to return to the paint tab actually and just add a little bit of uh, turn it back to diffuse color temporarily. Turn them both up to diffuse color, go into component mode, activate a paintbrush, drag out a brush, just add a little bit more in the way of holes. Not too much, but just a little bit to make it more interesting. Need a few little clusters there. Okay, I think that will do. I'm going to drop the tool, save all images, return to the render tab. Now I need to go back to group mask and displacement and see what we've got. So I think that's looking pretty good in terms of um, the holes. 
I need to increase the contrast just like we did before so that's going to require a little trip into Photoshop so if I switch to Photoshop and open the document um, just as before I need to go to image adjustments threshold and I'm just going to adjust it so there's a bit more of the black in there and again just as before filter OLM OLM smoother just uh, run that I need to flatten the image again and save it bring it back into Modo update the file and you can see we've got much smoother edges now where the uh, where the holes in the paint are so a couple more things to do just add a bit of color variation and sort of grunginess to the top and do something with the caps so once again we need to create a new image so let's go to new image and make a PNG call this uh, barrel top grunge and we need RGBA, 2K is fine for this let it create, go back to the paint tab make sure we've got the oil drum selected and our new grungy image selected and select an airbrush with, let's stick to the procedural actually for now but maybe bring the um, the gain back down to 50 and the bias back down to 50 the amplitude to 100 so that will just give us a regular kind of noise map, set the color to black and um, to the paint let's paint some grunge in paint some grunge around here just to make it messy maybe try a little bit of white change the procedural this time to cellular let's make the bias much less so the little spots see how that works, yeah just a bit of variation try black again let's mix it in there with the white and uh, let's drop the tool quick ray GL to see things are looking like I might erase back in, I can see that the white's a little bit strong so I'm gonna get the eraser, that keeps the same settings, so that's using the procedural so it's gonna erase quite unevenly and you can see it's erasing out that white, I just want a hint of bleachiness in there I think I'm happy with that um, and switch to the render tab and see what it's looking like yeah that's really pretty good actually um, save all images, good time to do that so that we don't lose any work and I just like to reduce the opacity of that layer a tiny bit so let's take it down to 75 yeah that's pretty nice so I'm going to fine tune the top of this barrel a little bit um, just to add a couple of little subtle touches so um, the first thing I'd like to do actually is this grungy layer that we've just painted I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to set the duplicate to um, reflection amount and what that's going to do is it's going to modulate um, so the dark area is going to be less reflective and the lighter areas, the little bits of white that we painted are going to be uh, more reflective. It just adds a little bit more sort of variation to the surface and that makes it more believable. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the rusty metal that's underneath and I'm going to put conserve energy, match specular, give it a little bit of specular and reflection as well and 20 in the Fresnel, so that's 5 in the specular, 20 in the Fresnel and that basically is just going to make that rusty metal look as if it's sort of wet or oily which is quite a nice effect I think at the top here now moving on to the caps inside the rusty metal material that uh, that is assigned to the caps I've created a new group and this group, I'm just going to turn it on so you can see what's there has got a copy of the red paint material it's got a blank image map that we're going to paint a mask into and it's also got a noise um, as a bump so the first thing I want to do actually is to change the color of the paint because I don't want to go for red for this I think it'd be nice if it was really dark and dirty kind of color and I'm also 
in this case just going to turn the subsurface down to maybe 10% just to make it a touch more subtle and um, what we're going to do is modulate between this dark yucky sort of oily color and the rust underneath it. So same as before, let's select our um, our blank texture map, make sure it's assigned the right UV, oil drum top UV, that seems correct, and go to the paint tab and now make sure I've got the correct item selected, so it should be oil drum, go into component mode, back into the shader tree with my image map selected, and let's get a paintbrush and noise procedural and as before let's get our gain up to 200 I think I'm gonna leave the bias actually as it is and if I paint a test kind of mark let's see if we can see anything I change the color to white maybe I can see okay yeah I'm gonna paint white on black this time so I'm just gonna reload this image and as usual, she might reduce the brush, paint some holes to modulate between the uh, rusty metal and the flaky paint. So I will uh, pause the video temporarily and come back when I finish painting. And once I've been round with a procedural brush, I'm just going to change to a hard tip just to fill in some of the holes so that it's not all just the procedural noise vary it with um, with some regular brush strokes just so that it's not uh, well, just so it's more natural basically you want uh, you want some solid sort of fill here and there and uh, make sure also because of the projection painting to paint on the sides as well as uh, as well as the top so just go around and you, know, you can also add a few you know, little drops there, zoom right in to make a really small one, zoom back out, actually yeah, I don't really like that so let's paint it black, go back to white, paint back in just to create shapes mess and just to make it look as natural as possible so um, I think that's uh, sufficient for now so I'm going to drop the tool save all images so now that I've finished painting my caps I'm going to go to the render tab and you can see the effect so I'm going to change it from diffuse color to group mask and I'm going to need to invert the map. So now you can see that there is flaky paint and rusty metal. So as before, I'm going to duplicate this group mask and set it to displacement just to bring the paint up above the rusty paint and also, sorry, the rusty metal. I think it'd be good to make this um, rusty metal a little bit greasy as well. So five in the specular and 20 in the Fresnel, just to give it that kind of slightly oily, dirty look that we did with the rusty metal at the top of the barrel. So um, I think now's a good time for a test render. So here's a test render. Um, I think it's looking really good. I'm pretty happy with almost everything. Just one final touch that I think would make it quite nice is a little bit more displacement um, on the paint at the top. So, going to do the usual thing, let's just find this material in the shader tree and add a blank image and we'll make a PNG and call it um, paint top disp, uh, 2k RGBA as per usual and switch back to the paint tab make sure I've got the oil drum selected in the item list, go into a component mode got my new image map selected and I'm going to get a paintbrush with a procedural tip 
let's bring the um, gain back down to 50 I think and change the type to cellular make a white brush and let me just paint out a test stroke okay I want to reduce the size of this to let's try 40 yeah I think the bias needs to come down a bit more I might bring the gain back up to 100 say let's see is this no the gain's too high let me go back to let's try 60 obviously sometimes you have to play with these settings quite a lot before you get um, let's turn the amplitude up actually that, that can help so there's more of a difference between the low frequencies and the high ones yes that's the kind of thing I'm looking for um, let me reload this image let's see maybe bring the bias back up again now that I've turned the amplitude up and put the nozzle on that's going to enable jitter and it's not quite what I'm after. Um, maybe bring the opacity down actually to 50. Make a big, big brush. And then just paint some random bumpiness in. And one thing that might work quite well here, just because I don't want I don't want it to be too regular. You see where I um we get these really harsh marks. That's because I, I'm sort of lifting the stylus up quite hard. It's better to lift the stylus up really gently, but I'm going to go back in anyway and erase some of these areas. And the eraser's also got all my procedural settings, so switching brushes keeps all your settings, which means that I can erase in a sort of chaotic kind of way. Because what I want to do is just create a little bit of just a little bit of bump. This is looking a little bit regular actually, so it's going to take a little bit of work to to get this right, but um, that's just how things are sometimes. Just make sure I've got different sizes of bump, and maybe play a little bit with the uh, the settings. So I'm going to take the gain back up. Let's take the gain back up to a hundred, and go in with the eraser. Just make it more chaotic, more varied. Maybe have a little bit more in certain areas, like the sides. Okay, and drop the tool. Go back to the render tab and see how this is looking. So if I change that effect to, we could try displacement. I think I'm going to do displacement or bump. Let's see, let's see what displacement does. Okay, I think I'm going to need to do a test render to, uh, to see what that looks like. So in my test render, the map that I've just painted isn't showing up, and there's a reason for that, because basically the values are essentially um, too similar to the map that's underneath. So in order to make this map show up, I need to change the high value to 200%, and then it will basically double its strength so that it can now show above uh, the other map and then I'm just going to invert the map and uh, from here I need to do another test render just to see if I'm happy with the settings and here is the uh, the latest test render and um, I have to say in terms of texturing I think um, we've got there so it's involved no photographs at all everything's been painted by hand and we've really used and pushed the power of Modo's brush engine. Um, we've had to use Photoshop for a couple of little operations, but basically all of the actual painting has been done inside of Modo in 3D. And as you can see, it's a very, very powerful way of working. So we can achieve photorealistic results just by using the brushes. So I'm going to talk about a couple of alternative workflows, because there are times when you're probably going to want to use photographs rather than painting all your textures from scratch. Uh, mainly because it saves a hell of a lot of time. So I'm going to hide the hand painted texture and I'm going to load a new image in and it's just a rust image from cgtextures.com and give it the correct gamma. Let's have a look at it. So uh, you can see it looks, it looks fine but there's this visible seam which we're going to have to paint out. 
So in the Paint tab, activate the Clone tool and uh, check the Use View Projection option and then hold down Control and just click somewhere on your texture to, to select an area to sample from and then simply paint across the seam. Now using the Use View Projection option does result in this sort of slightly blurry quality. But basically if you want to paint across the seam there's no choice um, because without that ticked on you're not going to be able to paint across the seam. So what I suggest is just mix it up a bit, sample from a few areas so that there's no repeating patterns and um, don't paint too much across this seam as in don't lay down too much paint because as you can see it's slightly lower quality. I mean once you zoom out it's fine and no one's going to notice but uh, just be aware that when you're cloning in 3D in Modo, that those are the shortcomings basically. In order to paint across a seam you need to use the view projection but it's slightly lower quality than if you um, than if you had it to off. I'll just demonstrate what it's like off. So if I turn that off, um, control click here, and now you can see I'm painting at the full resolution. There's no blurriness. But if I go and try and paint across the seam now without view projection on, you can see there's this artifact that appears and if I just tick that back on I can go and paint that artifact out but the results are slightly blurrier. There's another way of using photographic imagery that's brand new in 601 and that's texture replicators. So um, you can see I've loaded the rusty image and there's a seam visible here down the side but rather than cloning the seam away what we're going to do and it's really really easy to do and we're going to set it to be a replicated texture. So if you go to the texture locator and go right to the bottom where it says texture replicator, simply select your mesh and you'll see that it will um, assign a little version of the image on every point on the mesh. So we're going to need to increase the size. So I'm going to increase it to 0 0.8 and um, just introduce some random rotation. Let's put 45 on the rotation and 45 on the random rotation and uh, very quickly and painlessly we've um, basically created a texture that can certainly be used as a base um, you can bake it down and do some additional painting on top um, but as you can see it's a really really simple and quick way of um, getting a photo texture loaded onto, um, onto a, an asset and once I add the flaky paint I think the effect is actually very very good. Before we move on to the next section of the tutorial I think it'd be good to have a recap and just talk about some of the settings that I used in the brushes um, when we painted the barrel. So if you remember to set up the uh, rust paint brush. I used an airbrush with a procedural tip and then I made sure that nozzle and the random ink were also on and with the nozzle um, active I made sure that jitter was on and then finally I looked at the size of the procedural texture and the settings for the random ink and with all these settings acting together I was able to paint this nice sort of organic and chaotic texture. So what exactly was going on? Well, obviously using the procedural tip enabled me to paint with a noise kind of texture and the nozzle enabled me to vary the size of my strokes depending on how hard I pressed on the stylus. Uh, the jitter meant that there was also some automatic variation in the size and placement of my strokes as I painted. And finally the random ink meant that there was some automatic color variation as I painted. So I encourage you to explore these settings on your own so that you can get a feel for how they work and uh, how to apply them together to create lots of interesting and varied textures as you paint. The next brush that I want to discuss is the one that I used to paint the holes in the flaky paint texture. So once again this used a procedural tip but this time the default settings on the procedural brush were way too soft and cloudy for the effect that I was looking for. I needed something with much more contrast in order to punch really clean holes through the uh, paint texture. So in order to increase the contrast I looked at the bias and gain settings and I set the gain to 200% in order to create a really harsh black and white texture. The gain was set to 60% and this was just to increase the ratio of black to white and finally I set the amplitude to 200% again in order to 
uh, increase the contrast in the procedural texture that I was painting with. And with these settings all set together, I was then able to paint these really nice holes um, with rough and varied and chaotic edges. But at the same time, the, there was enough contrast in the texture that it could just be quickly tweaked into in Photoshop with a threshold command and then have very good clean holes to use as a stencil map. And finally I'd like to take a look at the brush that I used to paint the oily streaks coming down the sides of the barrel. So once again I used the nozzle setting on this brush to make sure that uh, there was some variation in the size of the strokes according to how hard I pressed down on the stylus. And I also used the jitter settings so there would be some natural variation in the size and also slightly in the placement of the strokes as I painted them down. And with these two settings in combination with each other I was able to get these nice strokes that were um, not too clean and had these nice rough edges and really helped me to convey the sense of something oily and dirty dripping down the sides of the barrel.